Welcome back. And uh, in the previous video, we were doing a demo of the PTO Manager Excel template step-by-step -step, uh, data entry. And we have completed, we had completed three of the steps already. And now we're gonna pick it up from there and then continue with the fourth step. The fourth step is to enter the list of employees in the employee sheet. So since we already had completed setting up the policy settings and then entered a sample data previously for one employee, now we can enter all our employees. To begin, just make sure that you enter in the next immediate cell, employee two, something like this. So this will continue to add the new employees to your table and the calculations will automatically happen behind the scenes and the higher date and termination date termination date if the employee has left the company and then starting balance if you are uh, are migrating from another tool or system and you want to just take the balance as of 31st october then you can enter that the 31st october is because we said that we we are starting to use the template from 1st november so which means the day before whatever balance you had for the employees should be entered here so i'm not going to uh, enter all the data here since I've already I already have a sample data I'm going to just copy from that and then paste it uh, for two reasons so one is it's faster for me to do that second is to highlight how we can paste the data if you are pasting data please do not paste with a control V or just do a uh, paste like this make sure that you do paste special so for uh, if you're not familiar so paste special values this is the best way to do it so i'm going to just click on the this cell because i want to replace this and i'm going to go to paste special values okay so now what happens is i'm i've pasted the, the data from another file that i had and now everything looks uh, you know the way that we want it the formatting is correct because sometimes if you copy especially dates from some other files from somewhere, then the formatting could change and it could create some problems. So make sure that you do paste special either this way, you could do a paste special um, from here or um, you know if you do paste special here or choose value. So that's very important. Then only the values will get copied over. So now you're done with empl entering employee data, which is our fourth step here. And the fifth step is when employee takes PTO, enter that in the time off sheet. And in order to do that, we can choose an employee from the dropdown and you can enter a start and end date for their PTO. And so for example, I'm gonna just type in November 2nd, this employee took a day off for vacation. So I'm gonna type November 2nd in both columns because it's a one day off and I'm going to choose it's a vacation and go to the next row, type employee two, then this employee took November 6th to November 7th, two days, a uh, sick day, so I'm gonna just choose sick. So this is how I can enter easily each employee's data when they take the time off. Key thing here, if it's the one day, one day off, make sure that you enter same start and end date. If there are multiple days, then enter different days. Choose the time off. Uh, I'm going to just, again, same way as I did before, I'm going to copy my data from my sample file and I'm gonna now paste here to add to the table. So I click in the cell immediately after the last row, right click, paste special, values, okay. Now, nicely added to the table, we are good to go. Before I move forward, the one thing which is different in the PTO, information is the hours. So since we had set days as our tracking, and if I choose hours, I can come here, then it'll tell me to add daily PTO hours. This is important. Uh, even though the employee takes sixth and seventh as sick days, you have to enter daily PTO hours. So let's say the employee took eight days on the sixth and eight days on the seventh. So I enter eight, I don't enter 16. I have to enter daily PTO hours. Similarly, if the employee is going from eighth to 10th as sick days, if it is all the three days, if it's four hours, then you can enter that. But if each day is different number of hours, enter them as separate rows and not combine them. So that is one thing to watch out for in if you're tracking in hours. 
So let me go back to tracking in days because that's what we were doing. Then we don't need to enter this. So now we are done with entering the PTO days information, which is our step five. Now we are to step six. Step six is to view the report. And so this report is customizable for each employee. So I can just choose employee name here, uh, employee one to 10, we have 10. So let me choose employee six. So what we see here is this employee um, is, um, you know, started uh, or higher date is March 2nd, 2014. Today's date is 28th December, which is when I'm recording this video, eligible to accrue from 1st April of 2014 because there is a 30 day probationary period that we had set. Now the current accrual rates are shown, current meaning as of today, 28th December, and the current balance, as of today, the balance is shown. The data is tracked from 1st November, which is when we started using this template, and um, press Shift F9 to refresh. So the calculation should get automatically updated, but this visualization, um, you know, sometimes takes a little bit longer time. As you can see here, that the employee has taken three days of vacation, but it's only showing one in the black color. And so this is something that. Uh, needs a refresh. So I go to the formula sheet and I can get the calculate sheet and now you'll see the visualization update. And this, you can use the keyboard shortcut shift F9, but sometimes it doesn't work uh, because if your computer is using that shortcut for other applications or such, then it may not. So uh, the safest way would be to go to the formulas, hit the calculate sheet, then that should update your visualization here. And you can see the monthly PTO earned by this employee in November earned 1.25, December earned 1.25, used three days of vacation in November, two days of sick days in December, and then the year to date totals are shown here. If I choose 2017 here, then I would not see anything here because we are not in 2017 yet as of, as of recording this video, and that's why that will not appear, but 2016 December is you know, on. And so that's why you will see the 2016 data shown here. Now, the second page of the PTO report shows, you know, when the employee started accruing from, what is the first accrual day and the starting balances. So the starting balances that we entered in the employee sheet will be shown here um, uh, for record. And then the first effective accrual period will be shown. And we are not doing any prorating here for the first period. So let me talk about prorating. So this employee started employment way early in 2014, even before we started using this template. Um, as this template is designed to track both, you know, your tenured employees you had before, as well as new employees that will join in the future. So the first accrual window is before we started tracking this template. So that means we will not do any prorating because you as a user will be providing the balance as of 31st October. So I'm not doing any calculations as part of this template for 2014. Um, however, let's choose another employee to demonstrate how the prorating will work. So I'm going to go to the employee sheet and employee 10, let me say they started on 15th November. So the reason why I'm choosing 15th November is our window is monthly, it'll be clear now. So employee 10, again, calculate the sheet. And now this employee has um, started on the 15th November, but you know that the employee, um, uh, the window of accrual is first effective window is first to 31st. But the employee is beginning or eligible for accrual from 15th. And the reason for 15th December and not 15th November is because of the 30 day probationary window, right? And so from 15th December, the person should be accruing, but it is in the middle of the window. So we are prorating for the month of December, the employee will only earn 0.548 days of PTO for vacation and 0.457 for sick. This is lower than the standard accrual rate of one day of vacation and 0.833. And that's because 
the of the 31 days in december this employee will only receive pto for 17 days and that's because from 15th december to 31st december those 17 days the employee will receive pto for but for the first 14 days in december the employee was not eligible so the employee will not get credit for that and that prorating is done automatically by the template by default if an employee starts employment or it becomes eligible for pto in the middle of a window prorating will be done and will be displayed here and that's the purpose now the balance trend chart we have seen it before the balance trends will be shown and let me choose another employee who have some vacation days so you can see that the green is the vacation balance and the yellow dots indicate the vacation used so those three days of vacation used by the employee in november are shown as three dotted um, yellow circles and then the blue line is the sick day balance and the purple uh, indicate purple dots indicate when the employee is uh, using those sick days and then the balance is shown so this is the trend and you can customize this if you if i want to only see for one year i can just say 366 then i will see for one year you can customize this also it is locked by default but you can go and unprotect it using the password in zara and then you will be able to change this but make sure that you know this is a formula uh, but if you want to change it you can but be aware of the um, consequences if you make the change um, then you can now the last sheet uh, that is automatically calculated is the calendar sheet and here you can choose a month and the year so let me choose 2016 and i'm going to choose november and uh, again this will take a couple of seconds to update with the november data because again it's going through a lot of calculations behind the scenes and now you'll see the november reflect so employee one is taking vacation on november 2nd employee two sick day on november 7th so all of that will be shown for november uh, visually and you also can control um, you can see 40 employees at a time and you can control this by typing for example five this will move it's basically like a scroll and you will now see employee number five to 44 and so you can control the list of employees that you want to see by this way by uh, selecting a number and this will also be shown along with the totals of vacation and sick days taken by the employee in that month and also the number of days worked the worked days will be calculated based on how many days the employee was employed and then minus any holidays and weekends minus vacation and minus sick days and you can see here that the um, the vacation is shown as v if you want to change this to something else just type that in and then it will change if i want to tape ch change that back then i can do that very very quickly similarly i can change these labels uh, not employed any means not employed because this employee 10 only started employment on uh, november 15th and that's why it shows any until november 14th and this employee employee 4 um, left the company on november 19th and that's why this uh, shows ne uh, and so this is how the um, the calendar sheet works and you can extend it um, further more than 40 employees by selecting these cells and dragging uh, i will do a separate uh, video on that later um, but it is the calendar visualization of the employees pto days and you can use it for planning your resource capacity for the next month for example you can see how many days the employees are planning to work and then use that to the, calculate your capacity and then choose projects so that you can meet the demand the last sheet so we have already gone through seven steps and now we are in the eighth step which is optional so this is if you want to add any or subtract any balances for any employee uh, most likely you may not need it but if in case you want to say for example after you started using you say now i want to add two days to the specific employee's balance uh, then you can definitely do so by selecting an employee say when you want to add that balance 
and then you can say it, it needs to be a vacation balance i want to add five days for that employee uh, or you can say i want to reduce five days then you can do minus five so this is a manual option uh, in order to provide flexibility so that if for your business you have some unique needs you can use this to manually adjust the balances for any employee by entering that in this table so this is all um, that we have covered uh, each and every one of these steps so far in this video and in the previous video and after that you can just continue to add new employees as employees come along and uh, you know track their time off by entering them in this table and anytime when you want to print or see the employees balance go to the employee report choose the employee uh, and then do the calculate sheet so that the visualization updates and then you can print or export to pdf so you can go to print and then uh, this for example is all ready to be printed you can just hit the print or you can choose export to pdf and then share it with your uh, employee. Now, the key thing here is that I would recommend uh, on a regular basis, let's say, for example, on a monthly basis, if you give this report to your employee, then make sure that you save that data as PDF. Export PDF and then share, uh, give a name to the PDF file and store in your computer so that in the future, if there's any kind of uh, need to go back and look at, you know, what was the report I gave to my employee two months ago, you will have a copy because the template doesn't store all of, you know, snapshots uh, in the file itself. If you want to create a report as of a certain past date, then um, it's better for you to actually store each month uh, the files as PDF files in your computer. Um, this, is, this also serves another purpose because it's always good to have a record of what you gave to your employee uh, and so that you can always um, have a copy for the record. So make sure that you export the file as PDF on a regular basis. So that concludes our demo for this video. So if you have any questions about this template, please post them in the comments. Uh, I will definitely do another video, you know, answering your questions about how to use this template or how to extend this template. And I look forward to your feedback. Thank you very much for watching this video.